Howdy, Paws and Patty here. And this is going to be a little bit of a different hashtag Trash Trash Tuesday. Now, usually on Tuesdays, I take some trash and I put it in a dedicated trashy journal. But you know, I am working on my coloring book, ephemera journal slash organizer slash flow book. <laughs> and I am using these old tissue boxes to make some pockets. I want to show you how I'm doing that. Plus, I'm decorating the cover and I did some fun, whimsical lettering to put on the cover of the journal. And I want to show you how you can turn your own handwriting into some fun, whimsical letters. And of course, my inspiration is Joanne Sharp, The Art of Whimsical Lettering. I'm going to share this with you. And let's see. Oh, and when I get all that done, I'm going to go over to the jar of possibilities <laughs> and pick out what journal I'm going to journal in next and maybe set up a few crumbs. So why don't you come on in closer? So this is my fun little folder organizer <laughs> that I made. I'm going to put some ephemera in here and I made it from a calendar. Now this is the cover of the calendar, but the pages in the calendar, like this is January, had double pockets, but they were too large. So I cut part of it off. So I'm taking the part that I cut off, which actually has two pieces, well, three pieces really, and the side panels from the tissue boxes and I am making a variety of pockets to hold the ephemera. I'm going to put the big pieces in these two pockets over here and I'm going to put little pieces of ephemera in the variety of pockets on this side. So this is the side panel from the tissue box which I just cut down, glued on three sides and with my circle punch made a little thumb hole there and then this is the little piece that I cut off of here and I sort of separated the two pockets a little bit just to make like a little design oh and then this piece has a color on the back now this green piece didn't have any uh, you know like designs on it like this has a little boat so I would save that little boat and put that on something but the back of this one was just plain green, so I just made a, a little tuck here. And I am just putting things in here that I'm cutting out from the coloring books and using this for coloring book ephemera. I'll list that video below in case you missed it yesterday. Yeah, it took me a long time to cut down all these pages, re-glue the pockets, cut off a little strip, punch the holes for the rings, and get all that done. So I didn't get as far as making the pockets yesterday. So that's what I'm working on today, are the pockets and decorating the cover. So I decided that this needed a title. <laughs> a title. What I did is first I took a page out of one of the coloring books. Now I have a stack of coloring books here that I'm using to make ephemera from. And I just wanted like a pattern for the background so I ripped off a strip right off the top there. And I put coloring book ephemera. Now you can see how fun these letters are and they are so simple to do. So let me show you how I did that. So I got my colored pencils out and just using your own handwriting, what should I write? I already did the title to the book. So let's just do like Possum Patty. Okay. So Oh, oops, hope this shows up. And, I, you know, it's not neat, not all the same size, just sort of 
add some swirls to your letters like this and make some sections of your letter say a little wider like that my O's I just sort of spiral in S and now there's two S's in a row so I'm going to kind of put them on different levels and make a U the S can have some wider spots too I like to add swirls I like to add little fat parts to color in Again, making them a little wider like that. Make a swirly A. The fat part. Vary the size of the letters and add fun little embellishments to them. Just make parts wider. So you get something to color in. You don't have to color in the whole letter. All right, so that's pretty simple, right? And then I took a dark color and I took a lighter color. I like this aqua over here. And I colored part of it with the dark color. So I'm just going to color this in like this. Nothing has to be very neat. <laughs> and it's just whimsical. You know, this, this kind of lettering is like, you know, if you compare embroidery and slow stitching, journaling and junk journaling, <laughs> there's calligraphy and then there's whimsical letters. Just kind of free flow them, have fun. Definitely don't worry about perfection or size. You just have fun with them. Make them different shapes. See, like at the end there, yeah, add a little thing on there. That's all. This is skinny at the top, but wider at the bottom. This T is much smaller than that T. So you notice I left some spaces there. And in those spaces, I'm going to take the lighter color and just add some of this in there. And then if I want, I can... Like, see this little space here? I decided I wanted that a little darker. And just go back and forth until you get it the way you want it. So I think I'll color this all in like that. But then I'm going to go back and add a little extra blue there. I remember, like, when we were in high school... And we had to cover our books with brown paper. Well, we had to cover our books. <laughs> yeah, so there were those kids with fancy book covers. And then there were the kids like us who had book covers, brown paper bag book covers. <laughs> the grocery bags that mom would give you. But actually, I think we were probably the luckier ones, right? Because... We had this beautiful brown paper, craft paper cover on which we could doodle and play and do fancy lettering. Remember those bubble letters were all the rage back in the 60s. Maybe you weren't born yet, but those of us of a certain age can remember that. See how awesome that is? But that's not the end of it. This is just the first two steps. This is a multi-step <laughs> A multi-step uh, process. A multi-step process. Now, there's not much blue on this one at all, so I'm going to add a little, a little blue there. You know, usually I would have made this a swirl, but 
instead I'm just going to make that a fat part there. Everything doesn't have to be a swirl. Kind of nice to have it different. And I just love mixing this dark blue with this aqua color. That's the first two steps. Now step number three, I take a Sakura glaze pen. It is a dimensional gel pen, very shiny, very dimensional. I'm looking for something to scribble on. <laughs> okay, I get a scrap out of the basket there. It dries nice and shiny. And what's really nice about it is it writes over a lot of things. And I'm just going to add some fun outline to the letter. You don't have to be precise. You can go a little bit over, a little bit under. It all adds to the interest of the letter like that. See, I added this black line out here because I like that. Now I'm going to go around my swirl for the O and then for the S. Come out and go around like that. Isn't that fun? And just because you make one S one way when you're lettering doesn't mean you need to do that every time. You can make some look like capitals and some look like lowercase. Whatever you feel like. And I think this would encourage people to um, you know, use some of their own lettering in their journals. They can see how fun and colorful they can make the, your word on a journal page. Now, I've written a whole journal page out with just swirly letters. Or there's a different way I do this using watercolors. And just going to finish this up and get to the last part. Now you have to remember when you use this pen that because it is dimensional it does take a few extra moments to dry. And the next step is to take your Uniball Signo white pen which is also excellent for writing on top of things and just add little highlight don't go over the <laughs> don't go over the uh, glaze pen with the white pen when the glaze pen's still wet wait for that to dry and I just add a little bit of white here and there or put a dot I could put a dot there I could put a dot there so these are two of my fave pens and you can add these little white marks wherever you want to as much or as little as you want to I think they just really make the letters pop you can put little dots little lines make it fancy the thing is once you start playing it's like oh I don't want to stop I don't want to stop yeah, so look how fun that was. <laughs> it's so easy, so quick, so fun. Well, I'm not going to say so quick because sometimes when you start playing, you don't want to stop. And another thing I did on here was I've added these little black dots. So I added just little black dots. Like if you have a straight line on one of your letters, you can make a row of dots right down that like that. That's kind of cool too. Or put dots at the top of letters like that. Yeah, add some lettering into your journal pages. 
I should cut this out and put this in a journal now. <laughs> See, I made a heart, but I can color that in. I might color that in pink when the pen dries. So if you want more inspiration on doing some of this lettering, watch a passing freight train. <laughs> and you see all the graffiti and all the tags on the side of the freight train. If you don't have access to railroad tracks, <laughs> look up Joanne Sharp, The Art of Whimsical Lettering. She's got several books out and you can also go to her website and take courses with her. Now, I did take a course with magic markers. It was a magical marker mystery tour or something. It was really fun. And she shows you this writing, but not only to do the lettering, she shows you how to make these really cool backgrounds. So wouldn't that be beautiful in your journal? You've always had the power. Glenda, the good witch. <gasps> That should go in my Wizard of Oz journal. And so she goes over, you know, it's starting with like pens and paints and inks and brushes, tools of the trade, she calls it. And then she'll go over paper, Bristol vellum, which is awesome for doing your lettering. And then she has some inspiration here. So you make your own, you sort of use your own handwriting and turn it into whimsical lettering. See, just by writing it out with fat letters and, and decorating inside, all sorts of things to do. You know, just use your own handwriting, use your own handwriting, but do it in different ways. You know, make them fatter, make them skinnier, make them tall. Do it with different pens, color a block and then put, you know, like the white pen on top of it. So many ideas in here. And then she'll show you This is just using your own handwriting, but look, just using different color inks. Look how pretty that page is. Or coloring around the letters or in the letters. Here, something like what I did. Just make your letters, you know, up, down, wonky, a little wider, color them in. She shows you how to do that. This was one of my favorite things. You make the wiggly lines and then you write. <laughs> you write inside the lines like that, like this. This is really pretty. So I haven't looked through here in a while. And then she shows you like this one, add hearts to all the letters, add dots to all the letters or dashes or watercolor or marker the spaces around them. Paint, paint the letters. <laughs> Use your watercolor and a brush or a brush pen. Do the letters inside of a shape. Look at this, isn't that beautiful? She's got all that gold on there. And I just love, I just love her art and how she decorates the page. This is a dimensional paint pen. Hand cut stencils. And more examples, you know, of, of turning. Here's some, I like to combine some of the curly cues with some of the other ones and mix it all up. I tried this one once, putting the vines around the letters, just decorating inside the letters. There's so many ideas here. And none of them are hard to do because you just take your own handwriting and decorate it. And then she gives you ideas of what to do around, around your handwriting. Say you're doing positive quote, positivity journal, you can write it out and decorate the page. Look at the backgrounds, beautiful, gorgeous. I did this one in my journal. Well, one like that one. On this one, she's got stitching. That's another thing she got into too, was combining stitching. 
in her journals with her painting and markers and everything else. See, follow your heart. And then how she just designs the background. I mean, anybody could write like that. You just <laughs> use your handwriting. But I think the way she decorates them, I mean, just each page is different. These are just little accordion books. And then at the end, she has a list of inspiring words. So if you want to practice some, I have come here to dance. Oh, I love that. You can dance even if only in your heart. When you stumble, make it a part of your dance. Oh, she's got a few pages of these. <laughs> the joy is in the journey. I love that. Yeah, so she's got a lot of um, quotes you can practice with. So this is a really fun book. And like I said, if you go to her website, you'll see more resources on doing this. And there was a time, I don't know if she's still doing it, but there was a time when you bought the book that you can go over to her website and get the free course that goes with it. But I don't know if that's still up. So that's my whimsical lettering. Oh, let's color in that heart now that this is dry. There. Awesome, Patty. Now I can just rip this out and put this in a journal or on the cover of a journal. I did color a little bit of the background design just to make these colorful. Okay, I'm going to take this cover off because I want to put some paper on the inside of this. I'll put this aside. And my idea was to put coloring book ephemera over here like this. And then I had a little flower here a minute ago. <laughs> flower, flower, flower. So I cut this off. The top of one of the coloring book pages and I'm going to pretend like it's in this pocket. I'm going to color it and glue it down there and glue the words up there and then on the back of this I'm going to glue a coloring book page and put Possum Patty. <laughs> I didn't mean to make this but since I did let's not let it go to waste. All right, why don't I just go ahead and stick the title down because and it won't walk off. I'm just going to do a quick color on this flower before I glue it down on the cover like that. I like to use Prismacolor and this is this is my overflow. This was my old set of Prismacolor. This was 24 and then I got a 36 and most of the pencils in this set of <laughs> were you know like this size <laughs> so I went ahead and got another set to supplement it because I had all these little little tiny bits like this it was a paintbrush in here and um, yeah, and then when I bought some extra colors, like that don't come with the set normally, I think like these like greens here and this color, I just threw them in here, my extra. So I actually have two sets of the Prisma colors. And let's see, of course some of these are getting short too. Start with these colors, I think. Get these out of the way. All right, what color? Let's have we got to look at the cover here. So the greens and yellows and oranges and reds. So I can make this any color. When you color with your color pencils, make them sharp. So I'm 
going to make this one sort of yellowish and orange. And I'm going to start with a lighter band in the middle. You know, as soon as I got those coloring books out, the first person I thought of was Rosemary at You Rock Art. If you don't know Rosemary, I'll link her channel below. <laughs> You've got to go over there and meet Rosemary because she is amazing artist and musician. And she plays the keyboard and the guitar and she sings and she does art all with her visual handicap and she does color with us you rock art like on Mondays but now it's I think it's create and color with us you rock art on Mondays <laughs> so she just shared one yesterday and she uses the coloring book you know with the larger images in it and oops <laughs> If you treat your colored pencils rough, they will, the lead inside will be broken and there's nothing you can do about that. But sharpen away <laughs> until the pencil's all used up. But she is so positive, so pleasant to watch, always a smile on her face. I would definitely recommend you going over to her channel and checking her out. Tell her Possum Patty sent you. <laughs> Tell her Possum Patty sent you. So I like to use, you know, three or four colors here and do some blending. You start with the lighter and you go to the darker. I'm not that neat. I always go over the line. So people don't like to blend. So, you know, you do you. And then you go back to the lighter color and blend it all together. I just think it's fun to blend. And you get to use more colors. <sighs> okay, so this will be the finished outside cover. And I did take a black pencil and try to make a black line across the bottom there because it had a little bit of a shadow to make it look like it was in the pocket. I did that after I glued it down. On this side I'm going to look for a coloring book page and cover this whole side with a coloring book page and then put Possum Patty there. And then after that I'm going to finish cutting out some coloring book ephemera and fill up the pockets. And I got pockets on two sides. So this is an ongoing project for sure. But right now I'm going to go get my jar of possibilities and see which journal I will journal in tomorrow and have that set up. So I'll have two things going at one time here. <laughs> This is my jar of possibilities. And in here I've put a list of all the different journals I have that I'm journaling in currently. <laughs> so if I can't decide which one I want to do, I'll just open the jar and pick one out. And tomorrow I will be journaling in The Thanksgiving Journal. <laughs> it's a gratitude Thanksgiving journal. Okay, tomorrow will be Thanksgiving. Well, thanks for coming along today for a little bit of share of a few different things. Much appreciated. Bye-bye now.